All right, today we're going over the practice exam. Um, I emailed you last night and asked you to have your questions ready um, because we're not going to have time to go over all of them. So my hope was that you would bring up specific problems. Dead air. My goodness. I guess that means nobody's prepared to ask any questions. Maybe you are all ready to make an A. So I guess I'll go over some of the problems that I would consider to be the hardest. So let's see, how about number four? That looks positively ugly. And since I know that 24 doesn't go into 68, at least I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. Um, we are not going to have a positive one in front of C squared, so we're gonna have to factor by the AC method. Notice it says factor, does not say solve. This is not an equation. OK, so let's look at 24. I am guessing that the GCF is going to be 4. OK, but it could be 8. So let's see if 8 goes into 68. Evenly. No, of course it doesn't. No. No, it doesn't. So I strongly believe it will be four. So 24 24 C squared minus 68 C. Yeah, that's messy. Let's move this down so I can see it. Oh, no wonder. You're not supposed to ever tip your, um, um, your Wacom or you get tipped writing. I don't want that. I want to do the tipping if I want it. We're not talking about cow tipping. No, no, no. 24C squared minus 68C plus 48. So there is going to be a 4 in each of these. I know that for sure. 4 times 6 times C squared minus 68 divided by 4, 17. Minus 17 times 4 plus 12 times 4. Aha! Ah, uh -uh. no, never mind. My hopes were up. All right, let's pull out that 4. We'll have 6C squared minus 17C. plus 12. And now I'm going to multiply A times C. And 72. I thought I might have to go to the calculator, but I don't because I do know that 72 equals 8 times 9, and that 8 plus 9 is positive 17. So positive 72 is also going to equal negative 8 times negative 9, and negative 8 
plus negative 9 is going to equal negative 17. So, here we go. Don't lose your 4 because that's important. 4 times 6c squared minus 8c minus 9c plus 12. All right, so we'll have 4. I actually am going to put brackets here so that I can do this. Parentheses 6c squared minus 8c plus parentheses 9c plus 12. All right, well, for sure there's a C in every term in the first set of parentheses. Pull it up there. Uh, and two goes into six and two goes into eight. So two C is going to be our GCF and the leftovers. Let's see, two C times three C will be 6c squared, and 2c times 4, well, times minus 4 will be minus 8c. Okay, now plus, 3 goes into 9 and 3 goes into 12. So let's rewrite this. as negative three times three C plus negative three. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze, I'm gonna sneeze. Negative three times negative four. There you go, negative three times negative four is positive 12. But of course we have a negative leading term there. So that means our GCF has to be negative. So I pull negative three out as the GCF, and I will be left with three C plus negative four, which is minus four. So we are going to have four. Now that I know I have more room, I'll write it bigger. This is what I've got. So we'll have, let's see, 3C minus 4 times the leftovers, which are 2C plus a negative 3, so that's 2C minus 3. And now, of course, since we have times, and this, these are, are multiplied as well, we don't need those brackets any longer. And under normal circumstances, I would check my answer. But we have a lot of time problems. So let us just go on and assume it's true. Now, I don't want to be doing that either. It takes too long. OK. Um, usually it is true. If this matches this, 
then you know you're probably on the right track. Just don't lose your four. That's the most common mistake, is losing the four that you pulled out. If you had an equation, you could divide it out, but this is not an equation, it's an expression. And you know that because up here, up here, you don't see that it equals anything. And the only equal sign here is for the factorization. It says factored form, type your answer in factored form. So if you do what the instructions say, you will get it right. All right, let's do this. Four parentheses, 3C minus four, parentheses closed, parentheses opened, 2C minus three, parentheses closed. Okay, perhaps more people have come in. And if you have a problem you'd like me to go over, just shout it out. Now we already factored a trinomial. So let us, let's do this one because that's a different form of factoring. Notice that uh, nine and 16, don't share a factor, but you've got b to the third and b, so both of these terms share a b. So you can factor that out to the front. And what you'll be left with is 9c squared minus 16. Now 9c squared equals 3c squared. And 16 equals 4 squared. So this is the difference of squares. So let's come over here and write it a little bit bigger. And I'm just doing it this way because I've got parentheses. I could put parentheses in parentheses, but that can be confusing. All right, now we're factoring this. Gonna do 3C, 3C, 4, and 4, and plus and minus. So this B was a GCF that we pulled out at the very beginning, and this is that. So now we're going to factor this by the difference of two squares. And so you end up with, oh, it is C, it's, it's B's, B's. Why on earth did I start putting a C? I have no idea. Maybe I don't like B. Actually, I don't like B uh, because it looks like a six way too often. Okay, so I'll write the answer in here. B times three B plus four times three B minus four, and that would be our factorization. Now here we have a quadratic equation. It's a binomial, it's two terms. Each of these terms has a V, so you can factor it into V times V plus two squared. Uh, not squared, equals zero. There you go. So now this is an equation. So what you're going to do now is you're going to set each of these factors equal 
to zero. V is already set equal to zero, it's solved. But over here, we'll subtract two from both sides. And there are your solutions. Notice it says use a comma to separate the answers. Don't put parentheses around them. It's not a point. It's two separate answers, two separate solutions. Quadratics usually have two solutions because of that too. Oh, good grief. This is ugly. And I just took a quick look. While two goes into 14 and 18, it doesn't go evenly into 33. As a result, we do not have a GCF. As a result, we are going to have to use the AC method on this. So, I'm going to need some paper. Here we go. Okay. Now I am going to use my trusty little copier to copy that. Where'd it go? Yeah. Right here. Oh. Well, this is a good opportunity to share with you The, um, the full calculator trick that helps you a lot with problems like this that have obnoxiously big numbers. Now, none of these numbers in particular is obnoxiously large, but once we start multiplying them, they will be. So, going to use the AC method. A is 14. Oh, let me make that bigger. A is 14. B is negative 33. And C is 18. So let me make sure what I just said is completely true, and it is. All right, now we're going to multiply A times C, and that's going to give us 14 times 18, which is like a nightmare. Fourteen times 18. Enter, 252. Let me write that down. Positive 252. No, I mean, we could take the time to break it down. We could do that. Or, I have been wanting to show you the complete calculator trick to doing this. Now, all it's going to do is give you your middle numbers. We're going to be factoring by grouping. But, here it is. Let's go to y equals clear, clear, 
come back to y1. I've just multiplied a times c and I've gotten the number 252. In y1, I'm going to type 252 over x. Now I'm going to go down to y2. And I'm going to type x plus, and then what I typed in y1. Whatever I type in y1 is what I type now. 252 divided by x. Now before I go on, let me write down larger what I just wrote. Well, I didn't write that. Y1, well, let me, let me do this before somebody thinks I'm saying negative. Y1, what I wrote in Y1 was 252 divided by X. And what I wrote in Y2 is X plus 252 divided by x. Now, why would I do a silly thing like that? You'll see. Now I'm going to push the second key. And then I'm going to push the graph key. Okay, second graph. Now that gives me lots of numbers. So, before I do anything else, let me tell you that here's what we're looking for. We want two numbers that will that multiply together to equal 252, but that add together to equal negative 33, our B number. So we need two numbers that equal negative 33. So look under y2 for negative 33. That's what I'm going to do. Here we go. Over here, this is y2, and notice how the numbers get smaller, negative, but smaller in this direction. I'm going to use my down arrow. Now, the highlighting has to stay over in the X. If you want to move up and down. You can move it. But it won't move up. The, the numbers won't scroll if you do that. So I, I want it to scroll definitely because I want to get down to negative 33. And hope. Really, really hope. There it is, right there. Now, I don't know how to make this bigger, so here's what I see. There are three columns. You have an X column, a Y1 column, and a Y2 column. Under the, in the Y2 column, I just found negative 33. Now over here, X is negative 21 and Y1 is negative 12. Now I'm gonna double check you don't normally have to do that. 
but I'm going to for your sake. I'm going to multiply these two numbers and make sure they equal 252. Negative 21 times negative 12. equals 252. Now negative 21 plus negative 12 equals negative 33. These are our numbers. Are they the answers? No, I wish they were. They're not the answers. But we have to factor this by grouping. So this method gives you your two middle numbers. Here and here. So now we'll have 14V squared. Um, yeah, they're both negative, so minus 21V, minus 12V, and then plus 18. See, my, negative 21 becomes minus 21, negative 12 becomes minus 12. Now, from here on out, I'm just going to use the grouping method. Okay, so I'll have 14V squared minus 21V plus negative 12V plus 18, close parentheses, equals zero. Now this, we're going to factor, set each factor equal to zero and solve because this is an equation. Okay, now up here, this is two times seven times V times V minus 3 times 7 times V. So both of these terms have a 7V. That's going to be my GCF. And the leftovers are going to be 2V minus 3. Plus. This one's a little more difficult because when you have a negative leading term, you have to have a negative GCF. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, 12 and 18, their greatest common factor is going to be a 6. So, and the 6 has to be negative because the leading term is negative. Therefore, well, I don't really need that because I'm just, I've got a negative six here. Negative six times two V plus negative six times negative three because it's positive 18. All right, I'll pull out the negative six GCF. And what I'll be left with is two V plus negative three, which is minus three. Now, usually the sign that you're right so far, you're correct so far, is that that and that match. So it's kind of also a test to see if you're going in the right direction. Okay. 
So I'll have 2v minus 3 times the leftovers, 7v minus 6 equals 0. Now this is factored. Set each factor equal to 0. Two V minus three equals zero, and seven V minus six equals zero. Now I'm just going to solve each one the way we always do. Plus three, plus three. Two V, oh, negative three plus three is zero, so two V equals 3. I divide both sides by 2. The 2's cancel. And so I have V equals 3 over 2. There's the first one. Now over here, we're going to save room and add 6 to both sides. So we'll have, those are zero, seven V equals six and divide by seven, divide by seven. So V equals six sevenths. And now you have your solutions. That was very involved. So let me go back here. Where's my calculator? Right there. And I'm going to take a photo of this and include that in the notes so you can see it. Try to move that down out of the way. And while I'm there, ah, uh, uh, we'll include this. And what I want to do here is get a red marker and I just want to circle this line. Right here. This is one of the best methods ever invented. I did not invent it. It's been handed down from teacher to teacher as long as there's been a TI. All right, I won't save it. Okay, so um, yeah, I will do this though. Just so my red circle doesn't disappear. I have a question. Yes. Um, so after you multiply the 14 and the 18, do we not use the negative 33 for anything anymore? No. You have to find 
two numbers that multiply together to equal 252 and add together. Let me put a plus in there. Add together to equal negative 33. And that's that's all you need the negative 33 for. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Okay. No, can't do that. All right, all right, let's go back to the test sheet. Which is right here. Ah, uh, yeah, I suppose we need to do use substitution. <laughs> 